So when most teachers think of school gardens, the two things that come to mind is I don't have time to teach gardening and plant science is not in my curriculum. Um, so what we have done is we have come up with some garden learning centers. Centers are a format that most, especially elementary school teachers, are familiar with and we have been able to connect these centers to curriculum of all areas. So making the garden an accessible place for, for teachers of every subject and every, every walk of life. So another barrier we have found with teachers that we work with is um, how do I go outside and teach? I know how to teach in my classroom, but the outdoor classroom, I don't feel the same confidence. And so student engagement obviously is really, really important that when we take 25 students out, that everybody has something productive to do, not just the two or three that are planting or weeding or harvesting, whatever they might be doing. So we're gonna be uh, delving into how to uh, keep students engaged while in the garden or around the garden area. We are outside at our weather station today. Yeah, so Amy, I'm looking at our weather station, and to be honest with you, it's a little old school. There's not a lot of technology, advanced technology here. Can you tell us why that is? Well, Doug, I know a lot of schools really like the electronic weather stations. They have them feed into the media center where students can check the data at any time, um, and it's available to all students. But it doesn't really teach you a lot about weather. It teaches you a lot about data. You can get anything at any time but you don't really get an understanding of any of the weather standards. So I think it's important that students have that hands-on experience learning about weather. So let's just talk a little bit about some of the things that um, we think are important about that. So what, tell me what you like about a weather station. Okay, so one of my favorite things about weather station is uh, related to the garden specifically. Um, when I teach people to water, lots of times, especially with newbies, they want to know what days do I water, how often do I water, they want a formula, they want a cookie cutter kind of deal. And uh, I think we know that that's not really how it works. We have to take into the fact, uh, into consideration facts like how, how cold is it, um, how sunny is it, uh, all the different weather factors that play into how fast a garden dries out or plants. Does wind need. play a factor in that at all? Does Wind? Wind does. Wind dries uh, both the soil out and the plants uh, oh, through transpiration. So we want to pay attention to the wind. We want to pay attention to rainfall. We may have planned that we need to water tomorrow and tonight it rains really heavily. Well, maybe we don't have to water tomorrow after all. So it, it brings into play the idea that uh, I'm not just going to follow a formula, but I'm going to take lots of factors into consideration so lots more thinking goes into um, watering when you use your uh, all the concepts of weather oh interesting interesting um, yeah. some of the so. things i really like about having a, an old school weather station is that the kids get to to, to really see it and understand it they can understand when looking at a windsock if it's flat against that that there's no wind or very light wind. They could see a really heavy wind is when the wind sock's standing straight out and in between. And you can, you can learn to describe things both quantitatively with numbers through temperature, through wind speed measuring with an anemometer, or also qualitatively, like it's light and breezy today. It's, you know, it's partly cloudy. So understanding the differences between quantitative and qualitative and how they work together. Right. Um, in a weather forecast. So I've wondered if you could share with us maybe a couple curriculum connections that you think um, the teachers can use with the weather station. Well absolutely students. you can definitely tie in most most grade levels or at least somewhere in the elementary grades they will have weather standards so they will have to learn to read a thermometer maybe comparing Celsius and Fahrenheit understanding those so being able to to read a thermometer, being able to collect that data, seeing the change over time in that data um, is, is an important weather standard. And um, a lot of schools, a lot of curriculum has the having to forecast the weather. So understanding how to read all that data, put it together and see what might be the forecast for tomorrow. Right, um, and the change over time with the temperature 
if they are also recording um, plant data where they're measuring, they may see connection to growth rate with uh, temperatures Absolutely. as well. So those are really great connections and um, good stuff. Good Absolutely. Stuff. Well, let's take a little tour of our weather station. Yeah, let's okay? do that. So right. here we have the an information box. This is just a weatherproof box. You can pick them up at um, big box stores. They're something like you would see on a real estate sign. And this is where we keep all of our paperwork and data recording information in here. So let's see what's inside. So first we have just some basic instructions telling the students what they are going to be doing and it's by grade level. What else do we have? We have a cloud map. That's always important if we're comparing and we're expected to write down the, the clouds, it's nice to be able to identify them. Um, all it's right. a great opportunity too to start to notice e even before you necessarily memorize what each kind is that there are different types, there are of, clouds. Different types of clouds. Um, we have some recording sheets for our data. This one right here is one we borrowed from Life Lab, and this one would be for younger grades, maybe K2. And it, uh, all it requires of them to do is get close and circle. So they don't actually have to write anything down, they're just circling. Um, on the back side of that, we have some weather tracking information for upper grades. This would include date, time, your temperatures, your precipitation. This would be your quantitative weather data. Um, but not all students need to do quantitative. And it's important to learn the difference between qualitative and quantitative. So I'd like to include just a composition notebook in there. So in here, I can write my qualitative information. I might record everything. Any other thoughts about the weather today? So here's another place for you just to record what's going on outside today. Good. So moving around here, we have our thermometer. This is an integral part of any weather station. What I like about this one is it's got nice large numbers. It's easy to read. It's plastic. Um, it can be mounted directly to your pole. Um, you may want to consider placing it in the shade or even maybe building a little, little roof over it so that it doesn't get full sun. Uh, I like that it's adjustable. It does uh, turn on this axis here. And also uh, notice that it's placed at a height that most children would be able to read it. So we don't want to put it up where we can, but where the students can. And an older student can bend down easier than a younger student can. Uh, we put something there for them to stand on. Absolutely. Now, is um, air temperature the only temperature we need to worry about in the garden? No, or actually. Or in the, in the classroom? Yeah. So. Um, there's two other temperatures. One would be soil temperature, and this probably is my favorite one for the students to, to consider because we, we tend to start to know how the air feels, but we don't think about what the soil temperature is to a seed. And soil temperature is what's used to determine when it's time to plant seeds. And then... And I also... like the fact that that one is digital, and so I'm getting a little bit of a mix between analog and digital. So right. I, I'm getting a little bit of both. How about what the, do we have here? How about the water um, thermometer, Amy? Pool so, thermometer. So this is just a floating pool thermometer. I like it better than just a regular glass thermometer. It's a little safer for students. So all I have is just a five gallon bucket that has water in it and a pool thermometer. And this way students can compare water temperature, soil temperature, and air temperature. This helps them understand much more complex concepts like winds. Winds are formed by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. And if I see this from a very young age on a daily basis that maybe in the morning, one of them is higher, but a different one may be higher in the afternoon, I get to understand how, how the sun and how the material affects the way it heats and cools. So I think that's an important and a very inexpensive way to get that concept. And notice that we tie the string to the bucket, makes it a little tougher to walk away. Makes it a little tougher to walk away, absolutely. Now on this side, we have just a piece of conduit with some pipe clamps that are leading up to our bright, colorful windsock. Our windsock helps us to learn and understand wind speed along with wind direction, depending on 
how how far out it's sticking and then what direction is and how are winds named doug uh, by the direction from which they come okay so so, so i'm going to need something else to help me with that aren't i yes so let's look down here we also have cardinal directions this is also important to have in your garden these are just inexpensive one foot stepping stones that have been painted with north south east west our cardinal directions on them um, again a very inexpensive way they're not going to walk off and a way for students to really understand in fact they could physically stand in the middle of that and really understand maybe the differences between north and east i might be able to understand that it's coming from the northeast because it's not coming from one of those straight directions. Right. Not to mention where the sun is as well. Exactly. Yeah. And so over here, one of the other things that we have is you have to have a rain gauge in your weather station. This one's nice. It's large. It's plastic. The numbers are easy to read. You can remove it from the base. The base can be mounted permanently to your weather station, but this part comes off for easy access to emptying. Um, so, and you might want to have a couple of rain gauges around. Okay. And these are the these are your basic components of a weather station. And here's a few other alternatives that you might want to consider. So if you don't have an info box, you could consider just a clipboard, or I like this one right here. It has a clipboard on the outside, but it opens up to store all of your recording sheets and some pencils. And if you don't want to uh, buy a, a wind sock, you can have your students make a wind sock. This one I made with a solo cup and a Target bag. So if you want to repurpose, teaching about repurposing some materials instead of throwing them away, or maybe you want to have your kids make a one sock to take, take home, home. Right, yeah. this is a very easy one to make. Um, I also like having a wind speed indicator. So this is one that I just ordered from Amazon. It was very inexpensive and it's digital as well. And what I like about it is watching kids discover with it especially on a slightly windy day if they move around and the difference between pointing it into the wind and pointing it away from the wind how that changes the wind speed and so here I can get a little bit more this would be more of my quantitative measurement where my wind sock and how far it's sticking out is going to be more of my qualitative and right, at some measure. point, maybe they start to connect those words. Strong wind means certain miles per hour Absolutely. of wind speed. Absolutely. Um, so here are just some of the components that we really like in a weather station. And we hope that you'll consider putting one in your garden. So we hope that you can get something from this and go create your own centers. Be, be creative when you put them together. There's a lot of different things that you might want to do that we didn't do. Um, and there's plenty other centers that you could create as well. Sure. So we hope that this has been helpful for you. Mm -hmm.